Ladies and gents, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, post-match press conference. We've got our winning coach and wing captain, uh, Jake White and Marcel Kutsia. We'll start with questions on the floor and then go to the guys who are online. Take questions from floor, hands. No questions. Thank you. We'll go to the guys online. Brendan, I see you have your hand up. You can go. Uh, Jake, uh, well done. First of all, epic win there. Where does this rank for you uh, in comparison to um, all the other stuff you've done in your long, long, long career? Yeah, Brennan, look, it's got to be up there. I mean, to be fair, as I said before the game, uh, incredible Leinster team. Uh, dominated European rugby for just the last couple of years. I looked at their record. 225 games in Pro 14, lost 21. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, all those international players. As I said, I think what's what's really pleasing is that we started with them in week one. And obviously the learnings and the understanding of what we needed to do the next time we played them was, uh, was obviously evident today. And that's obviously why I'm so excited because I think it's not just the fact that we beat them. It's that the group has grown significantly in the last seven months. We'll go to Jan. Jan? Apologies, sorry. Th thanks, Jumani. Uh, Jake, Marcel, firstly, congratulations. Yeah, I, I think most of the questions are going to be around, uh, you know, the achievement. But I think uh, I would ask Marcel, uh, when, when it started raining like that, um, I mean, obviously, you guys uh, started off and it looked like a beautiful day. Uh, I don't know how, how bad it was from here, but can you describe us the, the change in conditions, firstly? and the change in tactics, or do uh, you need to change anything? Yeah, well, obviously being in Ireland, I know firsthand how quickly the weather can change here. I mean, we had sunset, we had rains, and then we have sunset again. So yeah, look, uh, it's, it's all about sticking to your system. I know we had a plan, we wanted to execute it, and it actually played into our favor if it did start raining. You know, we wanted it to be right up front of their faces. Our kicking game was very good, and um, we managed to get our good chase lines and going. So, yeah, look, basically, uh, you just adapt to what it presented to you. And luckily, the group responded uh, very well. And, yeah, we're pleased, obviously, with the win. And, and the physicality of the game, I mean, uh, it looked uh, out of this world from here. I mean, again, you know, we, we can only judge what you see on TV, but it looked out of this world. No, well, like the coach said, you know, they're full of international stars, you know. So before the game, we said, listen, if we want to manage to win this game, we're going to have to play at that level, you know, and that comes with the physicality that we brought. And uh, we knew if we could get into the faces and win the game physically, uh, start implementing our our strengths, you know, we, we could come out with a win, you know, and we executed to perfection and a good, good job for the boys, but a uh, job not done yet. Uh, great victory, you know, we will take this in, but uh, there's still one more game to go, uh, so, and we're very pleased with that. Ashwak? Jake, it was a phenomenal defensive effort, but the guys also never stopped playing, you know, kept on putting pressure on them with ball in hand, whether it was up the middle, tight through the guts, or or even bringing guys like Kirtley in and Kana now and again. And that must have been quite pleasing to see. Yeah, Ashwak, uh, I mean, again, I sort of been saying since I took over the Bulls, um, we've been very good in our forward play historically. Um I really enjoyed the, the interchanges today. I mean, I thought that first try, a little play, we scored a try there, you know, interplay between backs and forwards. Um, yeah, I think I think generally, I think I'm very happy because of the fact that we've learned so much. Um, you know, our forward back was outstanding, turned a couple of balls over. The key was not to give them any set piece in the beginning. Um, so we didn't kick the ball out, we kept the ball in. And I, and I think someone said it just now, Jan, but I think the weather you know, a couple of unforced errors by Leinster, knocked the ball on a couple of times, which they don't generally do. Um, and that also, I suppose, you know, helped us because it broke the rhythm of the attack as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's obviously a great win, but um, a couple of things did work in our favour, to be fair. Simon? Thanks, Ju. Jack uh, and the rest of your team, congrats. Uh, well done. I, I, I want to ask about... Um, Absorbing the pressure on the first three, four, five minutes, well, first seconds, five seconds um, of the game and, and, and extending that, first of all. And then obviously setting up your own gameplay. You were never um, in a position, it looks, that's the way that looked from, from our side. You were never dominated in the position that you were forced to play that they let you play? That's the first question. Um, and, and I'm going to ask it for, for both of you. Yeah, look, I think, 
a lot have been said about Leinster over the years. One thing they're very good at is they start really well. Um, they generally build scoreboard pressure and they get the other team to chase them. Um, and when we defended that first couple of minutes, turned the ball over, kicked the ball down the field, you know, generally that, that changes the momentum of the game as well. Then all of a sudden we were up uh, and then it, the game becomes different. You know, I think to be fair, then Leinster showed they also human. You know, they had to then chase the game and made one or two mistakes, just like other teams who, you know, obviously have to chase against them. And uh, yeah, so it, look, I think the moments are so, I mean, I look back at that game, you know, we, we should have kicked the ball out when we slid across the field there, we gave them the first try, you know, they, they, those are the moments. Then we get sort of penalized over the trial line for holding on in the first play of the second half. And I just thought, geez, you know, you're going to have to finish those off and not make so many silly mistakes if you're going to beat Leinster. And, you know, as I said, as it turned out, it was always going to be one or two moments and it, it was one point. And, uh, you know, I'm just obviously very thankful that we were on the, on the, on the winning, on the winning side. Just the last question about the phase play, the set pieces were exceptionally well managed from, from, from the field as well. Marcel, um, what did you say to the, uh, to, to, to your players, uh, line outs, um, you, you were contested in the beginning and then you started to get, uh, the handover and your own throws, you started to secure that also in, in, in the, in the scrums also, they were contested, uh, play, but you started to get it over with what worked for you. Well, I think the big um, message early in the week, you know, if you want to have a chance of winning in the playoffs, your set pieces has to function. I mean, it just set you up to get you in the right positions. And yeah, I have to compliment Coach Russell Winter, the forwards coach, uh, but I the scrum coach. Um, um, you know, it's a, it's a buy-in to all the players that did their homework prior to the week. You know, we didn't have a lot of time to really train. You know, we had a fine balance of resting the bodies and getting the detail in. But yeah, you know, it just shows you if you mentally switch on, you do your homework and your extras, it can work for you on the day. And I thought our line-out leaders were exceptional, managed to adapt according to the scrum what the ref wanted. And yeah, look, it's always going to be a pillar of strength and it can get you in the right areas. And thankfully, we could have closed the game with that, you know. And I think also the composure that was shown with the forwards, you know. I think, uh, you know, like you just mentioned, uh, they came with um, a force in the beginning. We managed to absorb that and we just managed to get ourselves in the right positions. But yeah, it's still a lot of work on, you know. We're far from perfect, but... Uh, We'll take our learnings, but yeah, no, I'm very proud of the of the forward pack personally too. Drew, can I sneak in this? Can I sneak in this just from the from the refs? You you said we we started to play what the ref wanted. How difficult was that, and how long did it take for you to do it? It looked um, not like a big effort, but you continuously started to play what the ref wanted. Yeah, I think it's important, you know, like uh, as, as a team, you have to adapt, you know, and that's what we learned through this competition, you know. And uh, I think the main thing, state the main thing, we want to implement our system on the day. We want to do what we wanted to control during the game, you know. Yeah, you know, it's the call to the rep and we adapt to that, you know. So I think the biggest thing is not to overthink it, just do your job, know your job, and yeah, just implement it. Ken, over to you. Thanks, uh, Kumani. Uh, congratulations, Jake, Marcel. Uh, magnificent stuff. Marcel, how, how does it feel for you personally? You've uh, beaten Leinster for the first time in a, in a playoff game. Yeah, look, the emotions ran high after, in the interview, I think, afterwards. You know, it's, uh, I've had a couple of goes at them. I think four or five times couldn't manage, only came short with Ulster. And then, yeah, wearing a Blue Bulls jersey and then managed to get the win. It's a proud moment. And as a captain... You couldn't be prouder. It's definitely a highlight of my career. And uh, yeah, but I just want to refer back to what I said now. Now the job's not done yet. We still got one more job. And uh, yeah, we're going to prep the best we can to that. We'll see what happens in the future. But personally, a big highlight of my career and uh, something to be proud of forever. Jake, if I can uh, just follow up with you. Um, the uh, the adaptation at the scrums and, and some brilliant line-up work in the second half and the Defence have all been mentioned, but uh, I guess one thing also in that second half was, uh, uh, I know Linz had a yellow card and you guys had a handy lead, but you were under a lot of pressure. Uh, how happy were you with the composure the guys showed just in terms of game management? Uh, the patience just to defend and then work your way back up uh, into Leinster territory. Then, yeah, I mean, I think that last play of the game just sums up how good Leinster are. You know, the game was gone and it was literally a minute left, I think. And they still ended up keeping the ball for like 10, 15 phases and then ended up scoring under our poles, you know. So, 
I mean, I was sitting there thinking, even though it was eight points, it was never going to be a fate complete that we were going to win, you know, and, uh, and that's what I'm happy about is that I, you know, I genuinely felt during the game that we'd never done enough to, to keep them out. And, uh, you know, as I said, that last block there, you know, I'm, I'm just very happy they didn't do that from the beginning of the game where they could control the position and everything like that, because I mean, it looked, it looked, it looked effortless at the end there. I mean, we were trying to keep them out. Um, and we obviously, even though we knew we had won the game, I mean, the reality was they still had the confidence to, to go from one side of the field to the other and and score. So, yeah, okay, now, you know, there's a lot of learnings in that. I mean, as I said, the last time we played them, we learned a lot. Now there's a lot of learnings to come out of this knockout game. You know, the one thing I suppose Bulls have done significantly well since I've been there is played their best rugby at the back end of a competition when the knockout games have come, you know, both in the Curry Cup and Super Rugby Unlocked and, and all the competitions. So, yeah, I'm just hoping that we continue to understand that when it comes out to knockout rugby, we've got to play with that intensity and obviously you've got to play with that composure and with, with that confidence. And you know, if we continue to do that, I'm sure we'll create opportunities for us to win competitions. We'll go to Carl, Percy, and then Jan. Carl? Jake, uh, Marcel, congrats. Um, Jake, you mentioned in a previous interview that um, you're going to use the match tonight to see how far you've developed in your quest to make the Bulls one of the best teams in the world. Obviously, um, you're very close to it. How far are you and what do you still need to improve to take the tag yeah. as the best? Look, Carl, fantastic. You know, I just think it's fantastic. But I mean, one swallow doesn't make a summer. You know, we just won one game against Leinster. You know, we, as I said, you know, the, it's great that our forward curve and that our progression looks like it does. I mean, there's there's a lot more things I'd like to do. You know, there's a couple of signings that we're still going to try and get into place. You know, I was, the, I was answering a question just now to Bobby Skinstad outside and the La Rochelle game. You know, the La Rochelle packs probably a thousand kilograms. You know, so there were a lot of things I learned there as well um, in terms of having massive pack of forwards as well. Um, so we're not, we're not close call to where we want to be. But I mean, you know, without being arrogant, I mean, of course, playing in the final of the URC in year one, and being in the semi-final of the Curry Cup back home um, is something that, you know, obviously is fantastic for our union as well. Um, and yes, we want to keep growing and keep getting better. No different to, to Leinster. You know, I'm sure, I saw Leo just now, I'm sure, you know, he will say the same message. You know, they fell short twice this year and it's not really like them. Um, but they'll, they'll be a force to be reckoned with again. And, and if we have to, you know, one thing... Uh, about Leinster they've proved is that it's not a one-hit wonder you know they will be in and about the playoffs next year again like they were last year and the year before and that's for me Carl is what we got to get to the Bulls have got to get to a position where every time we play in a competition we got to be there at the back end of the comp and and so far so good but I mean it's not it's not as I said one swallow doesn't make a summer all right we'll go to Percy Jan Ashfak and then we've got two questions here on the floor then we'll wrap it up Percy Baie geluk, Jack, en baie geluk aan Marcel. Jack, kan ek nie vraag, as ek luister na gister so persconferentie saam met jou, jy was redelijk baie nederig gewees, jy het gepraat van hoe sterk die Leinster span is. Was jy verbaas gewees met jou spanse vertooning vanaan, of het jy nog altijd gegloed dat hulle kan moendlik is die, die, die wedstrijd deurtrek vanaan? En dan Marcel, kan ek vir jou dan vraag, as jy praat van jylle werk is nog nie voltooi, die wat precies bedoel jy by die werk is nog nie klaar nie, as jylle werk eerst klaar van jylle trofie om hoog hou volgende week? En dan kan ek jou dan so vraag, um, Moet jy nou eerst nou wacht daar in, in, in Ierland, afhangende van wat morgen gebeur, of kom jy nou terug huis? Ja, so laat, laat hy eerst antwoord. Ja, kyk nou, um, so, our, our philosophy when we enter the NU tournament is to... Oh, is, kan, <laughs> um, ons enige, enige intentie is om uh, enige toernooi wat ons deelneem, wil ons die trofee lig, jy weet, en uh, jy weet, dit is een fenomenale wend jy links, en jy weet, soos vir in die week sê, is een wereldklas span, hulle weet hoe om te wen is kampioenskamp, En ja, jy weet, die hierdie job is gedoen, maar is nog nie klaar nie. Jy weet, ons gaan nou wacht en kyk om te sien nou wie in die finaal speel. Ek dink ons moet nou hier wacht in Ierland. Nee, ja, so ons wacht nou hier in Ierland. As ons kyk waar ons toekomst ons vat, jy weet, maar ja, jy weet, ons sal het geniet vanavond en ons sal die kiedie oomlik inneem. Maar begin maandag, begin ons weer van vooraf. Jy weet, dit is een finaal. Jy weet, um, ons, ons gaan nog 100% voluit vir het. En ja, wie ook in ons speel, um, sien ons vooruit daar. Ja, en Percy, net in Afrikaans, ek mean, ek was nederig, en ek sê weer eens, ek I mean, ek dink, wat, ek was bykie bang geweest, dat jylle nou alles opskryf, van die feit die bille gaan makkelijk wen, en sovoorts, en sovoorts, so, 
Ja, ik heb ik het altijd gegloeid. Ons kan winnen. Ik heb altijd gegloeid met ons span. Wat ons harde werk wat ons gedoen het. Je weet kan onze dier trek. Maar je weet, ik wou niet voor die media story geven om zeker te maken. Ik krijg span praatje voor voor niet. Sorry, dat is het. Jan. Thank you. Um, Jake, sorry, I'm going to switch back to English, but um, the, the only point of reference that Africans have up, have had up till now was Super Rugby. Um, would you rate this to uh, beating Crusaders in a semi-final in Christchurch? Would that be the, the, the point of reference? And Marcel, maybe you can also answer. Uh, I mean, I, I, as South Africans, that's, that's the only point of reference we've had to this stage. Yeah, look, I think it's been unfair to start comparing one competition and another team with, with Leinster. I think uh, they, you know, they deserve the credit. They've got a different comp, it's a different environment. Um, you know, obviously the All Blacks, uh, you know, a lot, the Crusaders, lots of All Blacks. This team has lots of Irish internationals. But I think, Jan, you know, any competition you play, playing away from home and, uh, and beating, you know, the team who's top of the log, uh, literally from week one is obviously a massive achievement. And, uh, you know, whether it compares with, you know, other competitions, obviously we, we don't, you know, we can't comment on that. But I will say that it's got to be up there. I mean, this is one of the, and I'm saying it often, this is one of the greatest European teams or rugby teams in Europe consistently. And the mere fact that you can come here and win, uh, obviously is a, is a highlight for any player, you know, um, as I said, we just hopefully we can learn and we can grow and, you know, we can do this more and more often as they've done in the past. Ashfaq? Uh, Jake, just uh, the, on the impact of the bench, uh, Janko Sanapur in particular, quite a few line of still there. And is David Creel okay? And then uh, Marcel, what, would you prefer to play the Stormers or I'll see in the final? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, to be honest, uh, it's got a house in Ulster. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, it is a bit closer, you know, to, towards Dublin. But uh, you know what? At the end of the day, you have to adapt what you get. Uh, you know, both are quality size. We'll be watching them with, uh, with enthusiasm. But yeah, at the end of the day, may the best team win. And uh, yeah, we'll adapt to according to what team we play. Steve, last one from the online guys. So sorry, just just on uh, David Creel's injury and Jake the impact. I just got a you got a bang there, Ashfak. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, they're very big on HRA, not only yeah, but all over the world. So you know, I don't think he passed his HRA. So hopefully he'll be okay. That's the one nice thing about playing on a Friday um, is you get more uh, get more time to prepare for the for the other game. Um, no different in the World Cup when you win the when you get uh, you know when you get the when you win the semi-finals or whatever, or when you win the pool, you get an opportunity to play on a Friday night as Leinster chose to play on a Friday night so you get more turnaround time. And, you know, it's actually worked in our favour because if we have to go back to Cape Town, um, you know, obviously we don't have to fly straight out here tomorrow night. Um, and if we stay here, we've got another day extra to bring someone across or to get our injured players, you know, ready for Saturday. Stian? Uh, Jake, just final one for me. Just I know it's uh, it's not with it's a group effort and a team effort, but um, uh, just some words maybe about your defence coach Jay Mangalu after tonight's thing. Um, defence coaches don't often get the <laughs> get the plaudits, uh, you know, especially when four tries are scored. But the, the defence was outstanding tonight. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, so Jay is obviously work in progress as well. I mean, he would have learned from the last time we played them as well. Um, you know, so often when you leak, I think we leak three trials tonight, is it? Three. Um, and we still end up winning the game. I mean, we'd like to get to a point where we don't leak any trials. But uh, I think I think the one thing is true, Brendan, you've got to make sure you defend well against Leinster. You know, that has always been, I mean, any team that's beaten Leinster has had to keep them out. I saw a thing today. I'm sure people here have been watching the rugby. Crusaders made 222 tackles in a semi-final today uh, and won against the Chiefs. So that's the kind of game sometimes you've got to play. So... You know, it's not always about scoring tries. Today it was about defending and keeping Leinster out. And, and obviously, we, you know, I'm obviously very happy with that. We'll wrap it up from the vote. Yeah, just one question for Sunday newspapers uh, yes. about your prep, Jake. Yes. Uh, when you saw Leinster putting 76 points on Glasgow last week, yes. do you think that's a good thing or perhaps a bad thing? Well, how would you react? Yeah, it, it's both. It's both because I think what it did do, it showed me that Leinster were on the rebound of what happened the week before. And good sides do that. You know, good sides show their pain by, by, by bouncing back the next week. And I mean, that's part of what I shared with our players is that I didn't expect anything other than a big drumming against the team that had to come here after they lost to Rochelle. 
Um, but I mean, I don't think it has any significance on why they played and how they played today. You know, I think there was enough hurt and the chance that they let slip by not beating La Rochelle, especially for leading most of the game, that whoever was going to get the rebound was going to get that, that sort of performance. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I suppose in some ways it's, it's good when you're not on the receiving end of that, of that rebound because you get them a week later. Um, but I have to reinforce, I don't think because they got it so easy last week that they took their foot off the gas this week. Okay, and was there anything during your build-up this week, some, a moment when you thought, yeah, things are good, you know, what sort of a week did you have in Dublin, was it enjoyable? Mm, yeah, look, I, I, it was a very, very different week, I mean, I say that because it was very short, you know, we, we played and we had to fly, it was a little bit of a disjointed week in that we had to fly with four airlines, um, because we couldn't get enough seats in one airline, so there were a couple of guys flying via Amsterdam, some via Frankfurt, some via Dubai, uh, so it's not the ideal situation, but saying that, you know, I think... Uh, I got the feeling that all of work we had done in the last couple of weeks um, were, was going to be confidence enough for us for this week. It wasn't like we felt we were losing out on, on any preparation. So, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm just, as I said, trained really nicely at St. Michael's College. They were really kind to us, had a good school, you know, looked after us um, and everything went well. You know, obviously, uh, yeah, as I said, it always goes well when you, when you play away, stay in a hotel and win. So if we come to Leinster next year, we'll be staying same hotel, same school, Training the same venues. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much, you. ladies and gents. Thanks, coach. Thanks, Marcel. Thank Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.